Welcome back to the shipyard. Today we have an update to a video that's a few years old. Uh, a couple years ago I did my top 15 named ships in Star Trek Attack Wing. Well today, top 20 named ships. You know, the game's gotten bigger, there's a lot more named ships, and 20 felt about right. Um, normally I do top 10s. And uh, this is a category that felt worthy of a double. So, uh, without further ado, let's get to the list. Number 20, Cube 384. Now, this is Borg Cube 384. And uh, this is an interesting ship. Hi, by the way. I'm David. Um, it's a... 60-10-10. Yeah, 10-10. 20 points of durability. Um, what's impressive about this ship is, uh, well, it it's about this big of a game piece. It's, well, if you've watched my How to Mod a Borg Cube video, you will see how big it is. It's about 8 inches. 10 inches? Maybe a foot. I don't know. Eh, not a foot. It's big. Uh, and it sits on the board, and it basically has different rules, and it even moves. Um, but it plays differently. And, and that's the cool part of this. So, what this ship does, it's not the named ability. I mean, the named ability is nice. Your shields cannot be affected by upgrades from an opponent fleet. Okay, fine. It's nice to keep your shields and all. But more than that... It's got a sphere port. This model's first contacts Borg cube. So you can dock a ship. Notice, I said ship. Not just Borg sphere, although that is one of the more common applications. You can dock the Enterprise. You can dock Voyager. You can dock mm, a Borg tactical cube. Uh, you can dock... A lot of different things. There's a few rules for it. You can't dock another big Borg cube. That does not follow the Russian nesting doll principle. You have to have something smaller in. But yeah, this is a, a really cool game piece. Uh, a really difficult to find game piece. But uh, a good one for the game. And, and something that... Uh, that really does make a difference in your fleet. All right, number 19 is the Gressrill. Now, you might be going, what in the world is a, is a Gressrill? Well, it's a Gorn ship. And uh, yes, I know none of the Gorn ships actually had names in the show, but this is one that, uh, that does some interesting things. Um, the Gorn have good weapons in the game. They have a, a, a weapon that puts a, a token on the board, and then you can fire from that token at all the ships within range of the token. Uh, and it's a Gorn-only weapon. They also have a few upgrades that can only go on Gorn. So in order to utilize those things, you need a Gorn ship. Well, the Gressrill is one of the best ships that the Gorn have at their disposal. Now, yeah, it only has three attack dice. It only has seven total durability. But there are upgrades that exist that make this ship more defensive. Plus, it has a very nice ability. Modify attack dice step, disable a shield, cancel a hit or crit. So you're trading a shield to cancel, but you can cancel out a crit, and that makes a big difference too. Um, and that's why the Gressrill is my number 19. Moving on, number 18 is the Vorn. Now, as you can tell by IKS, it's Klingon ship. Well, Klingon ships do a lot of damage. And the Vorn is no exception. Uh, the Vorn has four native attack dice. Furthermore, it's 
when attacking if you're cloaked. The def if the sh defending ship is at range 1, you get two bonus attack dice. If the defending ship is at range 2, you get one bonus attack die. You're piling on. You get to do more damage if the ship is close to you. And that feels very Klingon. That feels like I have my sights set on my target, and that's all that I need to do in order to take them out. I love the Vorn. I think the Vorn is a great piece in this game, and uh, it comes in the starter set. Um, I mean, good luck finding a starter set, but it comes in the starter set. Number 17, the Enterprise A. Now, this is one that uh, kind of a, a holding on. But, uh, and yeah, I have to cover up one of them because that's a, a Kelvin ship. And uh, we're not talking about the Kelvin universe right now. We're talking about Kirk in the movies. Wait, that still sounds like the Kelvin universe. Uh, Shatner, Nimoy, Walter Koning, James Duhon, Nichelle Nichols in the movies, the Enterprise A. So what? We're looking at the end of four Star Trek V, Star Trek VI, right? Enterprise A. Uh, the old Yorktown. And it's not that this ship is three attack dice, or eight total durability. No, none of that's actually exciting. No, it's all in the named ability. If you have a scan token beside your ship, you get a bonus attack die, two instead if you're attacking a cloaked ship. This is another way of making use of scan. You get to really hit home. You get three crew slots, a weapon slot, which is always nice. You can add in some type eight phasers or upgraded phasers, go up to four attack dice. Uh, and you get a tech slot to kind of do some fun things with as well. I like the Enterprise A. It may not be the best ship these days, but it's a good ship. It's a ship that I, I still find use for. Not all the time but at least some of the time. All right, number 16 is the AMR, the IKS AMR. Um, now, this is one, you know how I said we weren't talking about the Kelvin universe? Now we're talking about the Kelvin universe. Because, well, the Klingon version of this, the pure Klingon version of this is just bad. See, what this ship does is uh, it, get, it gets battle stations, right? And battle stations on a Klingon ship is rare. It exists, but it's on some D7s, and D7s are okay, but not great. But the AMR also does something that uh, is rarely seen. It's got a once-per-game ability. Uh, when you suffer hull damage, uh, if you are cloaked you get to make an attack with your primary weapon. This ship only has a 90 forward arc, but that's not a problem. Uh, hopefully, you can be in a position where you are shooting uh, and have somebody in position to make an attack against them. Because if you don't, well, you did life wrong. Or at least you did this game wrong. But that's also where things like Sensor Echo come into play, lining up your shots. And the Amar is a very powerful ship. Um, seven durability makes it a little mm, dicey. Pardon the pun. But it is something uh, that's unique. I like the once per game nature of it. And, and I think that there's a lot here that uh, people somewhat overlook. Number 15, good old fighter squadrons. Now, this is a ship. I, I just, I love the named ability here. Um, it kind of falls into Winmore. 
But the named ability here really just solidifies how to make things hurt more. When attacking a ship at range 1, if it has at least 1 damage to its hull, add a hit result to your roll. It makes life hurt. Now, ideally you want to play to that. You want something like uh, Admiral Decker that's going to do a damage, uh, do a hull damage. So you target a ship, you, you hit them with Decker. Now they've got hull damage. Now your fighter squadron's instantly getting their ability, even through their shields. That can make a big difference. Um, the other fighter squadrons are, are good. They're interesting. Um, but they're just not quite the same. They all cost the same amount of points. Um, fighter Squadron 3 is very shifty, sensor echoey. One's interesting to play with upgrades. But really, it's six that to me hits home, does more damage, really packs that punch that you're looking for. And that's why Fighter Squadron 6 makes my list in the number 15 slot. All right, number 14, the IRW Saran. Now, on the front of it, not an impressive ship. The Valdor class, you know, saw a movie. It's not a great ship. But the named ability here really brings it home. Combat phase. After the ship attacks, you can do a two, a green two bank maneuver. That means you can have an auxiliary power token beside your ship. And you can make an attack. And now you've cleared it, so you can do whatever maneuver you want next round. But more so, if you can attack first. Romulan commander? Anybody? Anybody? No, okay, didn't think so. Um, if you can attack early. There's high captain skills. Uh, you can make your attack and then move out. And you're not going to get shot. That's the best kind of defense. That's the that's the second best attack cancellation in the game. The best is destroying your opponent's ship. But uh, I like the Saran. It does something that very few other ships do. At the time it came out that no other ship did. And that was do something in the combat phase. Shoot and then move. So you got to go with it. It's, it's a solid ability. All right, number 13, Weapon Zero. This is another one of those that just kind of wins for me based on the fact that it's a cool piece. But it also has a really nice ability. Yeah, you pay for it. In fact, under the old costing, it cost more. It's got 14 points of stats, and it costs you 30. Because 14 doubled is 28. It cost you more. Um, but it's a win defending. You get to roll a defense die for each hit or crit that comes in at you. That's a big deal. Now, you got to play to it. You got to put the upgrades, put a captain on there that enhances your quality. And if you do that... You can actually live a very long time. Weapon Zero becomes a damage sponge. If you don't do it that way, well, I think I have some videos uh, of gameplays where, where that works. Uh, let's just say the weapon goes kaboom. But um, when, when things go well, uh, this is a very good ship. You stack up ox power, but... Um, yeah, it's weird that something that was meant to be very offensive has become very defensive in attack wing. Um, kind of shows that cannon doesn't always carry over. But nevertheless, it's a good ability that I really enjoy. Number 12, Alpha Hunter. Now, this is another one of those ships 
uh, it just is shifty. It really does alter your perception of where ships are going to end up because you just can't predict things. Uh, the Alpha Hunter is a Herogen ship, but it's got this neat ability. After you move, you can perform a sensor echo with the one maneuver, so not just a one or two like a normal cloaked ship, but you get the one. But it's a free action. So you can move, normal dial move, sensor echo with a one, then take a target lock. Uh, or a battle station, or whatever other action you're going to do. So it's basically, you can be here, and end up all the way over here, pointed sideways. It's like your maneuvering positions change drastically with that free sensor echo. It's, um, it's really hard to state how much the Alpha Hunter changes the flow of positioning prediction. Um, because at least a portion of this game is trying to figure out where your opponent's going to end up. And the Alpha Hunter says, good luck. You're not going to figure that out. Um, and anytime you can subvert your opponent and, and mess with their, their thinking, I think you're ahead. You're winning the psychological game. Okay, number 11. Kimpix Attack Cruiser. Um, why this isn't Kimpix flagship, I don't know. He was the Chancellor, the Klingon Chancellor before Gowron seceded. Succeeded? Sorry, words. Um, it's a Vortra class. Five attack dice, all the glory of... A big attack. But it's got this cool action for Klingons. Target all cloaked friendly ships within range 1 to 2. Place a battle station token next to all target ships. That's great for Klingons. It's great for Romulans. Um, it's great for some mirror ships that can cloak. This isn't Klingon discriminatory. discriminatory. Um, it says, if you're cloaked, have a battle station. And... Not that cloaking is the be-all, end-all, but there is a point to cloaking. There's a time where you want to be cloaked, and Kimpex really is the flagship of making cloaking better. Because if you have battle stations while you're cloaked, you're both more defensive and you're more offensive. And that's a win-win. So... Yeah, I say go with it. Okay, number 10. This is where I'm going to take heat. Because it's not necessarily that Bioship Beta is, is amazing. Um, when defending during the compare result step, you may cancel one hit result. If you do so, place an Ox Power token beside your ship. Okay, that that's fine. Um, it's a nice ability, right? You're going to take a little less damage. You'll pile on a little bit of ox. Fine, 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 fine. It's that bio ships are good. Bio ships are really good. Now, they still feel a little overpriced. Um, now that ships have been getting recosted and been made cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. So... I don't quite know the valuation of, of bio ships right now. Um, to use a financial term, um, nobody's buying bio ships. Everybody's getting out of the bio ship market. It's not a good time for buy for bio ships, so you probably don't want to be invested in bio ships. That all being said. There's still a good ship. There's still a playable ship. And there's still something that you should be looking at. Because they hit hard. They take punches. And almost no one's running 
defense die reduction. Almost no one's running shield reduction. Projected stasis field comes up. But aside from that, you, you end up at this point where bioships are still really good. So consider it. Number nine is Quark's treasure. And uh, I could have easily put uh, the Sakharov in here. Really consider this the shuttle slot. Um, it's basically a how can you put stuff on a ship and move it, bring it in, get more stuff onto what you have. So this is really a hybrid between Cork's treasure and the sack. The Sakharov. And the Sakharov is cheaper. It's 14 versus 16. And really with a two-point reduction, it's kind of like it's 12. So uh, both are, are fantastic ships. Um, both really do alter the flow of the game. So, yeah. Uh, shuttles. Really, number nine is shuttles. Okay, number eight. The complete opposite of a shuttle. Um, the flagship. The flagship. Uh, the Enterprise-E. Now, this is one that uh, has come back into play. Uh, it used to be this, this was okay. Chronoton torpedoes were the best thing on it. But being able to fire a torpedo without needing a target lock now, um, this is really good because tor photon torpedoes, quantum torpedoes even, have become playable. Chronotons are still usable, but way too expensive. Um, the Enterprise-E is a legit ship. It's, I hate to say it, but it's a little squishy. And that's why it's only sitting here at number eight. But it's still a very, very good ship. Uh, with 10 durability, it's not going down in one shot. At least it shouldn't go down in one shot. And really, uh, it's a ship that you can maneuver well enough that uh, just about anything you need to do is going to be able to, uh, to be done with the ship. And you should be able to get at least two shots out of it um, or draw a ton of fire from your opponent. Either way, I think that's a, a win. All right. Uh, number seven is the USS Defiant, 1764. If you thought I was picking the Defiant, well, stay tuned. Um, maybe after we get the Federation Faction Pack, Life will change, but uh, right now the only good Defiant in this game is the 1764. Uh, and that's because it's got a built-in reroll. Uh, now, it's a conditional reroll, but it's built-in reroll. Also, it's one you can easily upgrade. It's got the kind of slots you need, it's got good durability, and it's got a maneuver dial that you actually like, as opposed to the Defiant's maneuver dial, which really should have had one turns on it. Seriously, why not? Um, anyway, I look forward to a rebuilt Defiant. And the Defiant 1764 is a very good ship. One I still use to this day. Not quite as much competitively, but I do still use it. Uh, else, why would it not be... Why would it be on my list if I didn't? All right, number six, um, and this was number one last time. Uh, if you ask me what's changed, the meta, uh, and just some better ships, Scout 608. Scout 608 is a very good ship. 
after you move, you may discard one of the upgrades, one of your upgrades to perform an additional white or green maneuver. This is um, how you subvert maneuvers, maneuvering predictions to the max. Uh, yeah, you're limited on upgrades, but the game is limited on rounds. Most competitive games are going six, seven, eight rounds, if that. Um, five, five to seven rounds. So, uh, you know, just consider that. It's never going to win you the game. Not anymore. But it definitely plays a role where you can get yourself out of trouble. You can get yourself into a good firing position. Really, there's a lot you can do with this. All right, number five, the USS Hathaway. Now again, I feel like the meta's moved away from this ship, but it doesn't change the fact that it's a good ship. It still has a good, a good not great maneuver dial. It can still run Type 8 and upgraded phasers if you put a second weapon slot on here. It can still run one of them if you don't want to. But more than that, just being able to do an additional action every round means you can have target lock battle stations. You don't have to invest a good captain to do it. You just have that. You have built-in quality at the drop of a hat. Sure, it costs you Nox power. Who cares? You can also evade when you need to and you don't feel like you're wasting your action. You're just putting stuff on the table. And I like that. I like that flow. I like that versatility. And if you try to argue the versatility, I'm, I'm going to come back at you and say that giving yourself options, giving yourself versatility is one of the hallmarks of this game because it stops you from being predictable. It stops your opponent from knowing exactly what you're going to do. And it makes your opponent have to plan for more things. And when they have to plan for more, they cannot plan for everything. And that gives you the inroads you need to make. All right. Number four. Learns Bird of Prey. Now, this was nowhere near the list. I don't think anybody had thought of this ship when uh, the first time I came out with my list. Um, this is a Ferengi Klingon Brel. Um... No, I don't think we ever saw that in canon, but uh, boy, I'm glad it exists. Now, the, the named ability is weird. Basically, it's if this ship and a Ferengi ship with a Ferengi captain, which can also be a generic Borel that is Ferengi Klingon, um, have a ship in their forward arc. Uh, then this ship attacks first and that ship attacks second. In the combat phase. And that's really good. Because not only are you boosting your attack. Regardless of what captain you put on. You're boosting another ship's attack. Regardless of what captain they put on. And that is super powerful. That is one of the best named abilities in this game. It's absolutely uh, fantastic. Okay, number three. Um, just talked about this in the Borg faction pack. And uh, it is the Borg Voyager. Now I gotta cover up the Federation ship. And, uh, well, I gotta move my camera. But. This takes an Intrepid class, which, which was viable. It gives it an extra attack die and an extra shield. Charges you four more points for it. But gives you a free action. If you do a green maneuver. Yeah, that's conditional. You get a target lock. Gives you access to all the fun Borg stuff. You, you get one less crew for it. Who really cares? Still gives you battle stations. It's Borg ship with battle stations. You lose the 360 fire. That's kind of annoying. 
you still can put on 360 weapons because it's Borg ship and it's Federation. Two factions that know how to do 360. Borg Voyager, very good ship. Not the absolute best ship in the game, but a very good ship. Very tough ship to kill. Tender ability with two defense dice, two evade dice. Um, plus good firepower. I'm not really sure what more you'd like. Borg Enterprise E? I mean, it doesn't exist yet. I'd like to see it. Number two. The Sutherland. And uh, no, I'm not talking about the OP prize Sutherland. No, I'm talking about the Starter 2 Sutherland that has the lovely ability, when defending, cancel one hit. Because that ability, coupled with a little bit of crew boosting, you know, Hood Riker, stuff like that, and a little bit of shield buffing and or a card like shield adaptation makes this ship very very difficult to kill again not all not impossible not anymore it was for a while but the sutherland it's a very good ship all right number one you guys ready for number one it's the ISS Defi- No, it's not. It's the Scimitar. Uh, yeah. It is the Scimitar. Now, why the Scimitar? It's got six attack dice. Well, so did some other ships. Bio ships, Borg ships. Mm, you're right, you're right. Well, it's got two evade dice. Well, so did some other ships. Okay, fair. Well, it's got 11 total bu total durability. Okay, yeah, that that's pretty good. The Borg Cube had 20. Okay, it only costs 38 points. Oh, that's, that's a bit better. Uh, meaning you get to put 12 points of upgrades on it in tournament play. Uh, you get double tech slots. You can put an interface generator on it and carry cloaked mines or put, say, reinforced shields on it. Gives you some options. Uh, the named ability is nice. After you attack while cloaked, you can place an ox power token beside your ship to keep your cloak from flipping. Now you're telegraphing that you're doing a green maneuver next round, but um, but that's okay. It's a trade-off. Maybe you bring a card that lets you uh, clear ox in better ways you know you, you've got some options now i still don't love romulan weapons i still wish it didn't have two weapon slots i wish it was like double tech weapon double crew but uh, again we'll leave my uh, fascinating design ideas for uh, the custom pages and and well the ancient get the cheese to sick bay uh, but yeah the, the scimitar is my top ship and I think you'd be hard-pressed to find a better number one ship. Um, the last time I ran Galactic Madness, the Scimitar won the People's Choice vote convincingly every round. I think it is most people's top ship. Um, and if even if they had to rank ships, the Scimitar would appear somewhere in their top 5, 10... 15 ships um, I think it, I think you'd be hard pressed to find somebody who plays this game who has played this game for a while who actively dislikes the scimitar in any method other than flying against it which I still think is a, a sign of praise for a ship when you don't like going up against it that means it's a good ship um I certainly don't like going up against scimitars, but I respect them, and I respect running them, and I know that they're a good ship. So, all right, uh, that was my top 20 ships. We'll go through the list here real quick. 
Uh, we had Scimitar, the joke of the ISS Defiant. Uh, the Sutherland, Borg Voyager, Learns Bird of Prey, The Hathaway, Scout 608, Defiant 1764, Enterprise E, Quark's Treasure slash Sakharov, Bioship Beta, Kimpex Attack Cruiser, Alpha Hunter, Weapon Zero, The Saran, Fighter Squadron 6, The Amar, Kelvin Version, Enterprise A, The Vorn, The Gressrill, and Cube 384. Okay, there you go. Top 20 named ships for Star Trek Attack Wing. Agree? Disagree? Let me know in the comments. Look forward to hearing them. And I will be sure to uh, to respond to them. All right. Um, until next time, we'll see you around the shipyard. Take care. And remember, like and subscribe. I had to do it. I'm sorry. Um, and also, remember, be kind to each other. I can't do it with that hand. Live long and prosper. Take care, guys.